Underway in New York this week, one business convention with an unusual cast of characters. Among them, Bozo the Clown, Bullwinkle J. Moose, and the incredible Crash Dummies. It is the annual licensing show, and Beverly Shook takes a look at it for us. The one thing the licensing business isn't doing these days is singing the blues. Licensing has grown to a $63 billion industry, and there's no end in sight. The rule of thumb seems to be, if it can fit on a t-shirt, it can be licensed. Corporations from Pepsi to Coors to Mack Trucks are selling t-shirts and beach towels to build brand awareness. You know, if you're sensitive to the marketing issues, you can put a good program together and be successful much quicker than building a brand the old-fashioned way. Companies say licensing is a cheap way to build an image. A company only has to sell one t-shirt to get repeat advertising. What we offer to the public, the consumer, is a reflection of Pepsi itself, the kind of company it is and the image that they're trying to create. Hollywood discovered the value of licensing long ago. Merchandise from Warner Brothers' Batman movie racked up a half a billion dollars in sales over two years. And Universal hopes to pull in big bucks from this summer's release of Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park. If you have a hot movie or a hot television show, merchandise will follow. And uh, that translates into big dollars at retail. And with everybody from TV shows like Bikini Open to Harley-Davidson motorcycles, companies are finding licensing is no laughing matter. Beverly Shook, CNN Business News, New York. Well, licensing is a big business with sales increasing fivefold in the last decade. Joining us this morning is one of the big players in that business, Seth Siegel, president and co-chief executive of the Beanstalk Group. Siegel has business dealings with Coca-Cola, Polaroid, and Hanna-Barbera, which of course is now part of Turner Broadcasting, the parent of this network. One of Beanstalk's clients is Dynatopia, a new fantasy adventure book which has been licensed to Turner Publishing and is due out this fall. Seth, welcome. Good morning. What is a successful licensing agreement? I mean, what's the biggest winner of all time? Well, it uh, uh, depends upon what field. In the fashion area, I'm sure Calvin Klein or Ralph Lauren have done deals that have netted millions and millions of dollars. In the character licensing area, I've personally been involved in one that involved a $6 million advance and a $24 million guarantee. What was the product? It was a breakfast cereal, but I will assure you that that's uh, few and far between. Mm -hmm. Ordinarily, deals call for advances as low as $5,000. Is licensing a good protection against uh, recession-induced drop in sales? It's a marvelous protection because of the fact that you have built-in consumer awareness so that at the retail shelf, people, are, if not looking for your product, are aware of your product. Does it mean you don't have to pay for advertising? Uh, sometimes, actually, you can uh, piggyback on the advertising or the awareness of the license that you're buying. Let's talk dollars for a second. Uh, supposing you license um, a character of some sort, and the, the creator of that character, how much would that creator get for every one dollar in sales of the licensed product? The range, it's paid on a royalty basis, and the range is anywhere from five to ten percent. And the benchmark tends to be eight percent, unless you have a currently hot movie or, or a hot rock and roll group, in which case the sky's the limit. So, now, you're, you're going out with this uh, Dinotopia. Yes. The author of that book would receive five to ten percent of gross sales? They would receive, and publishing tends to be based upon the retail selling price, but most other products are based upon the wholesale selling price, the price to the retailer. It seems like a, a large amount of money available to the creator of a character which is then licensed. Well, there are tremendous rewards for creating a cultural icon. Uh, <laughs> I assure you that uh, for every Fred Flintstone and Mickey Mouse that's out there, there are millions of would-be uh, Walt Disney's who have never yeah. created such a How much money do you have to put up front uh, to get a character launched once it's licensed? Well, if you're, the, if you're the owner of the character uh, and you are the Ninja Turtles, uh, you really have to put up very little. You can carry yourself to the bank uh, on, on a field of green. Why have we seen things like Mickey Mouse or Fred Flintstone endure over many, yes. many years, while other licensing agreements like those with The Simpsons seem to have fluttered? Well, I think it's both a combination of very good marketing on the parts of Disney and Hanna-Barbera, and also, it's, it's that remarkable quality about art. Why does Mona Lisa endure? And uh, other pieces of art from, from just 20 years ago seem to have no meaning anymore. Why was The Simpsons a bigger splash? It was a very popular TV show. You don't see that much of the licensed merchandise these days. Is it because of copyright infringements or something else? I, I, think that, uh, I think that the show continues to be popular and that the general consensus in the industry is that there may just have been a little bit too much of it, uh, that when sales slow down at retail, retailers close it out 
and uh, they say that nothing can kill a great property faster than a frightened retailer. Do you, are you basically the handler of the character once it's licensed? You say where it's going to be marketed, how it's going to be marketed, what the price is, that I, kind of thing? I, ideally, that's what a licensing agent does. A licensing agent really is the uh, nanny for the character or the corporate trademark or whatever. And the creator of the character gives up that level of control to people like you? Well, really never. Uh, we, we, we pride ourselves on the fact that nothing we do is without the uh, consent and awareness of our clients. It's a big job to keep them informed to lobby with them, but ultimately the client really has the last say. We, we would never put it on a product or a service uh, without the client's knowledge and, in fact, enthusiastic support. Good luck. Seth Siegel, president of the Beanstalk Group. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Business Day, we'll be back with you in one minute.